at about the age of 16, I went off to the Kansas City Art Institute to start my training as an artist. I had been um, channeling a lot of occult imagery uh, before that time. And I went off and I started to learn about how to paint for four years. It took four years. After that, I started out uh, working in Charleston, South Carolina, learning how to be a professional artist. Then I moved to uh, Long Island. Never really discovered and started my own body of work, although I'd been a portrait painter or mural painter and done all kinds of work around restaurants in Charleston when it was just starting to uh, take off um, as a uh, uh, destination on the map for people to, to see internationally. Um, but it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s that I started uh, a body of work called Rock and Roll Icon Art in which I uh, have sold thousands and thousands of pieces of work to people all over the world and some of them are celebrities. I'll tell you a little, little about them in a bit, but yeah, just a few that are in my house right now. This is um, a pixie appeared to John when he was high and explained to him the flat earth theory using a pancake. So a lot of my work is comical. It's also social commentary. It works on a lot of different levels. Uh, these rock and roll icons are, it's not because I love them or especially fascinated by them, although I am fascinated by some like Bob Dylan. I paint primarily the Rolling Stones, Elvis, the Beatles, and Bob Dylan. And those are because of people that I was listening to or that influenced my time period in the 70s. Anyway, so I adorn the frames uh, all, uh, with a lot of... Um, uh, found objects, things like that. Um, anyway, how, do people, how did it come to pass that Julia Roberts and Trudy and Sting and all these people own your work? Well, when I started out with this body of work, I tried to find out any place where the uh, movie stars and all might hang out, and I started figuring out that just like you and I, when they go to a city, they kind of ask, you know, hey, where's the cool place? Where's the neat theater? Where's the, you know, this or that? Where do I go to have fun? Where do I... Well, you know, a lot of uh, the movie stars and stuff, they, they are very culturally aware and they've been to museums all over the world and stuff, so they'll ask those kind of questions. Well, in Memphis, where my work, first, my first big collector was Susan Sarandon. She bought an Elvis piece of mine called, um, I saw Elvis selling uh, velvet paintings from a parking lot in a van. I was so thrilled when she bought my work. I thought hey, my life really had changed right there. Um, because after that, um, a lot of other movie stars, as I'd find these little places, little restaurants and alternative venues, I also read a book around that time, it was called um, Guerrilla Warfare, and it had to do with how to get your artwork out there in alternative venues. So I was the first artist that I know of that started showing in restaurants in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'd always have two or three restaurant shows going. Restaurants have an enormous amount of people coming into them, and in Charleston they had thousands of people. Any given night, just think how many people might go through a restaurant. Maybe 300, 400 people would have the advantage of seeing your art. Um, uh, versus a gallery, you know, maybe 50 people, if you're lucky, might straggle into a gallery on a good day, right? And so the people who own my work now, um, you can go to my websites, uh, rockandrolliconart.com, which I am, I'm the webmaster, I'm the one who developed the sites, and that's got flash on it, so I have to completely redo that site. It's very old school right now. And anyway, so the other one is kdebillips.biz. Eventually, uh, we'll have things on there that we're marketing. But there's also, I'm on Etsy, but mainly my presence for selling work in the last 10 years has been through eBay. And I've got all kinds of interesting people. I've got a psychiatrist in France. I've got a mango farmer in Australia. Just all kinds of people on my work. And uh, that's very gratifying. But one of the most gratifying things for me as a social commentator is to be able to talk about my culture through these do doppelgangers. I think that's how you say it. So when I paint Elvis, it's really, in a way, it's me um, talking about what I'm experiencing in life. These are highly autobiographic pieces. So as my work uh, evolved and developed, I then went back to graduate school in my early 40s, and I wanted to figure out how I was going to paint Jesus, who's kind of my ultimate icon, and I didn't want to paint him like everybody else had been. That's all I knew at the time, and I've got other YouTubes about that. Um, recently, I've been even going away from uh, any Jesus imagery and um, rock and roll imagery, and I've been doing, um, and I will be doing more, um, uh, I guess, personal pieces that um, 
reflect our culture and our social commentary in different ways, but where I'm not kind of leaning on this uh, doppelganger of, uh, you know, one of the rock and roll stars or even on Jesus so much. So although this is a spiritual painting, I'm using other iconography other than Jesus. I'm using the Ezekiel wheel, the many eyes of God. Uh, anyway, but the, the long-range goal is to have not only the virtual gallery that I've had for years or have my work in various places, galleries across the world and little restaurants and alternative venues, theaters, etc., but to, and on eBay, uh, which is a virtual, um, but is to have physical Cata galleries, uh, start out with one, 